my sterling single, mounting the steam whistle under the footplate. In the last episode, I described in detail how I modified a CME engineering whistle. The whistle was originally 5 eighths of an inch in diameter, but it was too long, so I radically shortened the whistle and fitted it into a resonance chamber. In this episode, I'm showing how I fit the whistle to the engine itself. I wanted to fit the whistle underneath the footplate so it couldn't be seen. On some engines, you can really get away with fitting the whistle on the right or left-hand side of the footplate at the back. I thought as this whistle is so overscale and strange, it would be much better fitting it underneath the centre part of the footplate at the rear. The story so far, I've made this bracket, and drilled and tapped a 4BA hole in the top of the whistle, and that's how I'm going to attach it to the bracket. Here's the completed modified whistle, and as you can see, I haven't really used very much of the whistle, but the part of the whistle that I have used is the important part, the whistle itself. All I've really done is attach part of the original whistle to a larger diameter tube, so the tone of the whistle should be a little bit deeper. Here's the mounting bracket after I bent it to shape. And once again, here's the mounting bracket just before I drilled two holes in it. You'll see the arrangement in a moment. Here I'm attaching the bracket to the whistle using a 4BA countersunk bolt. Once I've screwed this bracket to the drag beam at the rear of the engine, the top of the whistle will be exactly underneath where the footplate fits, because it's going to be quite difficult to get the engine under the drilling machine. So here I'm drilling a 1 8 of an inch diameter hole in the drag beam using my Proxon battery operated motor tool, after which I will thread this hole 4BA. I was surprised to find that the drag beam is made from gunmetal, so it was easy to drill. In this clip I'm using my vacuum cleaner in an attempt to keep the work area clear so I don't get the pieces of gunmetal stuck in my fingers. Here I'm carefully threading the hole using a 4BA tap. I drilled the right hand side hole in the bracket 964 of an inch which is clearance size for 4BA and I'm using a slot headed 4BA bolt to hold the bracket in position. Now I can drill the other hole in the drag beam. The resonance chamber on the whistle is going to be a success, I can hear the drill resonating with it. This time I threaded both the bracket and the drag beam 4BA. Then I removed the bracket, took it over to the drilling machine, drilled the hole in the bracket using a 964 of an inch drill, so that now is also clearance size for 4BA. And I can screw the bracket in place permanently, or at least until I remove it for painting which I will do once I get the whistle to work. In this clip I'm sliding the footplate into position just to make sure it's clearing. Here's the whistle hanging below the footplate and it looks further down than it is, there's plenty of clearance. I can't get a very good air seal on the whistle but you can hear by the distortion on the camera's microphone how loud it is. And here's the whistle with the pipe fitted. I didn't show much about making the pipe, it was very much a try it and see if it fits and then bend it again and unbend it and bend it again until everything fits perfectly without any kinks. That sounds a bit like what I used to do to a girlfriend I had many years ago. That's enough of that, I need to keep my mind on the job. The appearance of copper piping on a miniature steam locomotive is very important. You need to spend some time to get it right. And if you don't get it right the first time, what have you lost? A couple of union cones and the piece of pipe itself. This is not looking too bad, until you see the real thing that is, the model is very different. But then again, the model is designed to be a fully functional working model, and not a 100% fine scale replica. I had to trim the footplate slightly to make it fit around the piping. So what's left to do? Well I think it's a good idea to test the system. But for a bit of suspense, I will keep that part back until the end of the video. This is the trimming I was talking about on the footplate. Copper piping on a model steam engine must not touch any of the other metal parts. If it does, then with vibration over time it's likely to cut through the pipe. And as you can see this fits fine now. I've pumped up the boiler to about 60 pounds per square inch of air pressure, let's see what the whistle sounds like. It really is loud and it has that typical tearing sound. No squeaky harmonics, this really will sound good when it gets steamed through it. And that's about it for this video, I hope my cold improves because I really am feeling terrible at the moment. I'm going to play out the rest of this video with the Sterling single running on compressed air. Who knows, I may even blow the whistle again. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.